Welcome back to the 13 Films of Halloween, right here on Film Master Reviews. I'm Adam J. Okay, let's just get the obvious comments out of the way. Yes, I know. I know it's late. I get it. I get that it's late. I understand. I apologize. The Jurassic World review took a long time to make, and I just had no time in November to get these up, so I do apologize. I know they're coming really late this year, okay, but they're here now, so I hope you enjoy them. That being said, let's get into this. In regards to the Predator series, it's had quite the journey over the years, hasn't it? To the jungle, to the city, to Antarctica, and even to the Predator planet, this has been a relatively fun and gruesome movie monster to follow in any location. That being said, when the Predator was announced, I was actually very skeptical. I mean, let's be honest, they've pretty much done everything they can with this character. The only thing that did turn me around was Shane Black directing the film. Not only do I love Shane Black's work, but Black was actually in the original Predator film playing the character Hawkins. So he has his early roots embedded in this franchise. He's someone who not only acted in the original film, but according to many reports, actually ghost wrote much of the original film's script. So having someone who was there from the beginning really got me pumped for this new Predator film. Shane Black wrote Lethal Weapon, he made my favorite Iron Man film, he directed Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I could not wait to see what he did with this movie, and to be honest, it was very disappointing. That being said, if you look into the actual production history of this film, it's not hard to see why at all. The studios cut so much out of this film and forced Black to do several rewrites that compromised his vision for the film. And the more I think about The Predator, that information tracks to me as some of the film felt very genuine while other moments reeked of studio decisions, especially the garbage ending it gave us. First of all, let's get the obvious negative out of the way, the title. I'm sorry, studios, but simply adding the word THE in front of your title does not make it sound different. It is not the first time this has been done, and I'm sure it won't be the last. There was really no reason for this movie not to have a subtitle, or at least call it Predator 4 or something like that. Okay, just calling it The Predator felt like an excuse for the studios not to think. Secondly, the story for this film is a hot mess. It has some interesting elements, but a lot of these elements don't pay off, and in the end, some just feel kind of needless, while others end up feeling forced. This story sees the return of predators to Earth, as one predator is pursued by a more advanced predator that we haven't seen before. The film tries to answer certain questions about the predator, and why they take trophies, and why they keep coming here, which, in all fairness, are legit questions. I mean... Predators tend to get their asses kicked every time they come to Earth. You'd think they'd learn after a while. The main characters we follow are a group of ex-soldiers with mental instabilities. There's a doctor played by Olivia Munn, and one of the soldiers has a child who happens to be on the spectrum and unwittingly summons the bigger, badder Predator to Earth. Based on what I just said, you could probably guess that there's a lot going on in this movie, and yes, it does make the plot feel jumbled. You could tell exactly where scenes were removed in this film because the transitions between scenes happen so often and so abruptly. Characters come and go in this film at the drop of a hat, and about half this movie feels like it's being made up as it goes along. For example, there's a character in this movie whose last name is Keys, and he's played by Jake Busey. Obviously, he's the son of Peter Keys from Predator 2. I thought this was such a cool addition. They don't do jack shit with him. They barely do anything. He's barely in the movie. They could have done something so cool with him, and when I saw him, I was so happy that they were acknowledging Predator 2. For all the shit it gets, I fucking love Predator 2. But he's just kind of thrown away, and it's such a waste. Now, I'm bringing that one minor detail up, because that is this movie in a nutshell. Whatever Black wanted to do with this film may have been there from the start, but I'm sorry. This version of the film that was cut up and partially rewritten by the studio just feels like a big waste of potential. I walked out of this film not even sure how to feel about it. I know I liked some elements of the film, but I hated many others. Like I said, the film has very bad transitions from scene to scene. The ex-soldiers we follow can be funny, but at times their humor can really throw off the tone. And that leads me to my biggest gripe with this film. There is not one, not one, suspenseful moment in this entire film. The other Predator films, and even Alien vs. Predator, to its credit, had some suspenseful moments. Because they understood that that's what made Predator work. The Predator can be around any corner as it can camouflage and blend into its environment. It makes the Predator scary. They hardly have any moments like that here, and even when they try, it's either undermined by comedy or goes nowhere. The Predators in this film are in your face all the time. So... The moments that are, I guess, trying to be suspenseful don't really work very well. 
That being said, the Commandos have a lot of very funny moments. There are two played by Thomas Jane and Keegan Key that had me laughing often. There was one scene in this movie where Thomas Jane bull rushes a predator and just starts wailing on him. And when I saw that, I, I instantly just thought to myself, you know what, I'll forgive this movie for all its faults if I get a Punisher vs. Predator movie out of this. I deserve my Punisher vs. Predator movie, Hollywood! How dare you tease me and not deliver! Shame. Unfortunately, while these side characters are cool, the main character played by Boyd Holbrook is so bland and boring. He's a couple of bad one-liners and a fake-ass handsome McGee smile. That's his whole character. The villain is played by Sterling K. Brown, who portrayed another villain, Gordon Walker, on Supernatural. This guy is a fantastic talent, but it really begs the question, why do we need an antagonist like this in a Predator movie? Isn't the Predator sort of the designated villain? Granted, there have been antagonists in other Predator movies. You could easily say that Keys in Predator 2 was a bad guy, Topher Grace turned out to be a psycho killer in Predators, but none of those characters overshadowed the Predator as the primary villain. Make no mistake, this guy in the movie is the primary villain. And not only is he unoriginal and uninspired, but Brown plays him like a Saturday morning cartoon villain. I just kept expecting him to rip off his face. I'm Skeletor! Ha ha ha! You will never be rid of me! The action is sometimes cool and sometimes very lame. The cinematography and effects aren't awful, but they're nothing to write home about either. The Predator dogs are just beyond stupid. How they use the dogs in this film is even worse. When this film focuses on the practical effects, like in the old days, it looks wonderful. The CGI in the film, not so much. No matter how you look at this film. It is a consistent mess. That being said, I can't say with a straight face that when I was watching it, I wasn't entertained. It's a mess and by definition a bad movie, but it is entertaining. There are definitely some redeeming qualities to it. The camaraderie between some of the soldiers is often fun. It has some funny dialogue here and there. Some of the action does look awesome. And I was open to the idea of them trying to take this series in another direction. Mainly because they've pretty much done everything they can with this series up until this point. Jungle, seen it. City, seen it. Predator Planet, seen it. Antarctica, seen it. The Suburbs, seen it. God, I wish I hadn't, but seen it. I honestly feel like they've done everything they can with the Predator up until this point. They were so out of ideas at one point, they actually made two movies of them fighting the damn Xenomorphs! That being said, I honestly think it's time to just lay the Predator franchise to rest and just move on with our lives. I don't think there's really anywhere else they can go. And while this movie does set up for a sequel, it's really not something I'm interested in seeing personally. I'm giving the Predator a C-. Now, again, I understand it's not a good movie, but again, I can't say that I wasn't entertained by it. So, I'm going to give it a pass just on that. That being said, this is one of the most disappointing movies of this year, and I completely understand why so many people hate it. It's really not something I would ever go out of my way to watch again. And the C-minus, it's pretty generous on my part. And again, guys... I understand that these last two videos are late. I get it. I get that Halloween is long over and you probably don't even want to watch these videos now. Uh, let me make it up to you. What's one series that everyone has been begging me to do, but I kept saying to myself, eh, I really don't want to because I really wasn't that into the series. I mean, oh God, what could I possibly... Ah, oh, shit! Oh, yeah. So come and get us, motherfucker.